Let's talk about Love Island. Yes. Is it 2016? 2016. And that's a way off. Right, Love Island, it's a funny one. You get a lot of people going in there and they come out and they cash in. You're clearly an entrepreneur. Yeah. Was it a business decision? Do you know what? It was. I kind of justified it at the time because I had the social PR, which was just started. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going on there to boost the profile of my business. But at the end of the day, I always wanted to do TV. I always wanted to be in the limelight. I felt like it was in my blood, yeah. so to speak. And I never could get away with doing it because Ryan and Adam were serious actors at the time. And I got multiple different offers to do like Big Brother and X on the Beach. And I always have to turn it down. But when Love Island came about, it just came at the right time. And I felt like, do you know what? If anything, it's going to boost the social PR because yeah. I'll get a lot of contacts from it and everything else. But I went on there and I just loved it. Like I loved the whole experience. It was difficult at times, but going to a villa for six weeks, right? With beautiful people, your food all being cooked for you. Like no phones, no time, no stress. It was just, um, looking back, one of the best experiences of my life. I was going to say, it sounds like the dream. It's You're amazing. really selling it to me, Scott. The only, the only thing that's difficult, though, is is you, you actually genuinely fall for people in there. So I fell for this girl in there. And then it's their mission to break you up. And that is a head banger. Ooh. Like Every week, they're trying to basically go, right, how can I send the perfect type in to try and break these two up? And that was difficult. You know what you're signing up for, don't you? And the show, even to this day, I mean, I can't break away from being Scott from Love Island. Even to this day, everywhere I go, Scott from Love Island. I've done different things. I'm a businessman and everything else, but the, the power of that show. But at the same time, it opens up so many doors for me in business and I'm still using that kind of platform. Do you mind being associated with it? Because a lot of people come out and they try and cut ties instantly. Do you know what? We obviously manage talent um, from Love Island and the first thing that we try and do is try and move them away from that show, Yeah. which I think is, is part of it. And I try to do that with myself as well. However, I think now, because I'm, I feel like I'm through the other side, so for a long period of time, yes, I tried to break away from being associated to Love Island and prove myself in other elements, like mm -hmm. as being a businessman, as being an influencer for self-development now. And because I feel like I'm confident in my own skin and that I've done enough of, of other stuff, stuff, I don't mind talking about it now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it's almost like a moved on. It's like, for example, I don't know, Molly May, she's kind of moved on from the show now. So she can probably like look back and go, yeah, it's a great part of my life. But if that's all you're known for, then yeah. I can understand why you kind of need to shake that off. So I think it's part of the process of trying to... It's part of the process of self-development. It's showing the world that you are more than just a show. Yeah. And I think that's what I've managed 100%. to do now. Now, a lot of people do go on there and they come out and they just cash in mm. on club appearances, yeah. these big brand deals. Were you at a point in your life where you were still drinking and you did all of that? Yeah, so when I came out of Love Island, I was still drinking. I was still doing the nightclub um, PAs and stuff. I was trying to calm down a little bit. Um, but my life didn't really change that much, if I'm honest, because being around nightclubs, going to PAs, that's what I did for a living anyway. But I was about 27, 28, so I was at the point where I kind of needed to grow up a little bit. So I was very much on my journey. But to anyone listening to this, going sober, by the way, is not. it wasn't just that one moment and that was it. It took me so many lows, so many rock bottoms, so many Monday mornings, turning up to the gym, hungover, beating myself up to get to that point. So I don't want it to be like, oh, I had one bad day and that was it. Yeah. It was so many moments of going, Scott, man, you can't do this anymore. And I knew for years that I needed to change, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't find the strength. And it was that one defining moment where that was it, where you just kind of knew. And my biggest advice to anybody is don't wait for it to get to rock bottom to make a lifestyle change. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of people, when they make big changes in life, they wait for that defining moment or that rock bottom moment. Whereas I wish I listened to my gut a lot earlier, like, Scott, you need to change now. I had so many lows, so many hangovers, so many moments where I should have maybe stopped, but I just let it get to... So now you are completely teetotal, is that correct? Yeah, so basically I did 12 months sober in 2020, right? Yeah. Then I thought, I don't want to be the boring sober guy. So I started drinking again for the last two years, like 21 and 22. And then I, I realized I went, every time I drank, the lows were just like this. Like, because I was so used to being like super like energetic, productive. I was just like, these lows just don't work for me. So that's when I decided in December last year, I'm not going to drink and this time it's going to be for good. And I think that was a different change in like, mindset. That is huge. You've got the tattoo balance tattooed yes. on your arm. Do you believe it's possible to achieve balance with your personality? Oh, good question. So basically, people said to me, Scott, why can't you just have a couple of drinks? So I was like, yeah, I can. So I can go to a restaurant, have a couple of drinks, but I get nothing out of it. 
literally I go home going, that was a waste of time. So what I realized, when I realized that like the kind of light bulb moment, I was like, I don't drink for the taste of it. I don't drink for that kind of chill feeling. I want to get drunk. And that's where the problem came for me. So I thought if I can't enjoy it at that point, then maybe it's just not for me. And you know what? I've decided now that I'm not drinking for good because I think it changes my mindset around it. Instead of like going, I'm not drinking for a period of time, I don't actually develop social skills. I don't develop certain skills because I'm thinking, oh, I'm just going to get through this year and I'll be drinking again. Whereas now, when I say I'm not drinking for good, I know that I have to pick up certain life skills and that's the difference. And you never know. Listen, for me, the reason why, the main reason I stopped drinking is because I want to get to the top of whatever, whatever I'm doing. I want to achieve greatness. I want to be really successful and I want to reach my potential because I can feel that in my stomach. You know, you can feel that kind of, yeah that the fire yeah the fire the, the hunger it's almost like you've been reborn in olympic sport right? right you can kind of compare it in the craziest way so we have this huge high you have the pinnacle you have the moment you've been dreaming of and then you do it and that's it it's back to just everyday mundane life so there is an element of that cliff edge and it's turning yourself around so the way i speak about it is i say i'm living out two dreams because what I'm doing now is completely different mm. to what I did before. Mm. And not a lot of people see it like that. They have that high, they have that moment, they have that elation, and then what? It's like a lost void. So your scenario with the alcohol and the drinking, it's almost as if you've picked yourself back up and you're a totally different person. You know, like the two extremes, the level of it. Yeah. It's comparable. There's that, there's that meme, there's that meme where they say, why are all the ex-party boys and girls gone from dancing around kitchens to climbing mountains? Like it does seem to be those people who've got that kind of all or nothing mentality that kind yeah. of, and I think for me, it's like trying to find that balance where I don't burn out as well because cause yeah, I'm constantly active, I'm constantly- That's what I was gonna say. How do you manage that balance? Because it, it sounds extremely full on. You've got a lot of different strands you're juggling. I think it's just making sure now that I don't feel guilty about taking time off. I don't, because I think for me, because, I don't know, you listen to all this stuff about hustle culture and you've got to be yeah. up at 5 a.m., you've got to be doing this, this and this to be successful. I think it's, for me, it's like scheduling time now where I just do things that are just for me, whether it's playing paddle, going on a dog walk, just, I love a steaming sauna session. That's my favorite Ooh, thing to I do. Love a little do you know what I mean? Like making sure that I have those clean breaks where I just recalibrate, re-energize and do stuff that's just for me. And I think that's the biggest difference in the old Scott where it'd be like either partying all the time or yeah. working all the time. It's just about, finding that middle ground. Talk to me about your routine now though and how you actually find that balance and carve out that time for you. Right, so my routine, I usually wake up around 5.30. It was 5 a.m. but it's, that, there's a big difference between that 5.30 and 5 a.m. Scott, that is really early, you have to admit. Yeah, it is, but I like to wake up early because that's the time that's just for me. So okay. I go to the, I wake up in the morning, I try to read, journal, do a bit of meditation. By the way, it's not all the time. I'm not perfect, but that's yeah. what I try to do. And that's a good start of the day for me. Then I'll get to the gym for about 6.20 with the boys. We're always in there. And then I might play paddle around half seven. And then I've done all that before nine o'clock. I have to take my dog for a walk as well. So I've done a lot <laughs> before the day There's starts. There's a lot of different things going on here. <laughs> but, but honestly, like for me, that is my time. And the fact that I can do all that stuff before the rest of the world is even up, yeah. It means that when I, go, I, I do go into my day, I feel like I've already done stuff for me. I go into my meetings and stuff. And I said this the other day in the gym, I went, once I've done a big session in the gym, honestly, that is often the hardest part of my day. Yeah. Because if you put yourself through that, and like, because we lift heavy and we train hard, it's almost like anything else after that feels a bit of a breeze. It's like you're an athlete. Well, no, you just feel like you've, it's so Do good. you feel like an athlete? Do you no, have not, that? not at all, no. But an element of that mindset is really evident in your planning, in your day. Yeah, it's just my medicine. If I've trained, I just automatically feel more confident. I feel like I've accomplished something. And it means that if I get any kind of dramas in the day or any problems like, Scott, you've just tried to bench this or you just lifted this this morning, you can deal with anything that comes your yeah. way. And I think, I used to think training was just for how I physically looked because I wanted to look good. But what I realized more than anything now is for my mental health, it's like my medicine. Yeah. Um, and I get, I get so much out of it more than running, even playing paddle, like strength training is key for me. I try to literally get some chill time in. Like from six o'clock, I'll either book in like a, a sports massage, a steam or sauna. Don't get me wrong, sometimes I find it difficult to put my phone down 
after working hours because obviously I run different businesses. But I try to get to that point in the evening where I am literally off my phone for a good like solid two, three hours. Wow, sir. And then during the day, you are juggling a multitude of businesses. So Love Island, did your profile shoot up? Oh yeah, it did. I mean, overnight I had more followers than both my brothers and both my brothers have been on soaps all their lives. They were on Coronation Street, Emmerdale and I literally did one show and I had doubled their followers. That's was, crazy. Yeah, it was about, I think we came out, I think I came out with like 700,000 followers, like literally from one show, which was That's pretty wild. crazy. I feel like that doesn't happen anymore. No, well, it's, it's not as much, but then after that, they used to get millions, but yeah, now true. like the, the followers are now slowing down. But anyway, it was a but, massive, massive platform for me. I've been using it ever since now to like leverage my businesses and um, I've created Food Thoughts, which is a, a wellness community now. And we provide like nutri coaches and guidance on food, nutrition, lifestyle. Everything is kind of an extension of me. And then the social PR is we manage talent now. So we manage Love Islanders. And we work with influencers. And it's basically, um, again, a great business that sits so much in line with everything that I'm doing in life anyway. Almost an extension of me. So do you enjoy working on those projects? Because it's fueling everything you believe in. Yeah. So for me, business is tough. If anyone tells you it's not, they're lying. Yeah. Um, it really is difficult, especially in the, in the current climate. Um, it's stressful as well. It's so stressful. But what I've realized is I'm happiest when I'm doing what I do best. I am not the guy who should be sat there talking about finances and KPIs and everything else. Like what I'm really good at is connecting people to places, to brands, networking, bringing in new business, motivating people, um, inspiring other people to join Food for Thoughts and everything else. And that's when I'm happiest. So what I've really got to try and learn to do is delegate those other areas of the business to people who are better than me. And it can be difficult sometimes because you have to let go of certain elements of what you're doing. Do you find that hard? I do find it difficult because I, I think I've learned that now I am a little bit of a control freak. But at the same time is, it's all about finding the right people. And for me, I just want to be surrounded by driven, ambitious people. And that is the key for me, like having those kind of people around me because I can't do everything. I've got three businesses. I've got the social PR, food thoughts, and then obviously my personal brand, which is like the podcast and everything else. So I need good people around me in order to allow me to do these things. As well as do all of the fun things as well. Yeah, I think, yeah. There is a lot going on. Talk to me about triathlon. Ooh, 